excitement. Right here. Right here. Right, 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 right here on Trax FM. Hey, good morning. Welcome back. You're currently with me. My name is KG. This is Health on Tracks, as you know it, every Monday morning. And today we have a very, very, very interesting guest in the studio today. His name is Dr. Jaya Muniswar Rao, and we will be calling you Dr. Jaya throughout, yeah? And he's a pharmacist with Hospital Pula Pinang. You can also find us on Facebook Live today. And that is thanks to Chenta as well as Valerie, who are currently handling that. And our producer for today is Mr. Barrett. As for the topic today, inhalers, do you know how to use it correctly? Because... I was young, I've had asthma before, and I've actually used the inhaler when I was very young. Young, but Right now, you know, I'm back to normal, I'm good. But you know what, I've got the guest today, Dr. Jaya, to talk more about that. Good morning, Dr. Jaya, how are you today? Morning, I'm fine, KG. All right. And uh, you know what, we, there is a lot to talk about today, but of course, the very first preceding question would be, what is asthma? All right. Asthma is a chronic lung disease. Mm -hmm. It causes inflammation in the airways and results in airway narrowing, mucus production. So in the end, it will produce asthma symptoms such as coughing, mm -hmm. wheezing, chest tightness and difficulties in breathing. Mm -hmm. right? Asthma patients' uh, airway are sensitive to certain triggers. Okay. There are many, many triggers. Mm -hmm. You would have experienced it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But not all triggers are relevant to every single asthma patient. They are, they are unique per patient. They are very unique. They are very individualized. Okay. Meaning each asthma patient, they, um, he or she needs to identify which are the triggers that gives trouble to him or her. So, these triggers can be unique and they also could be environmental factors per se. Environmental factors, uh, for example, what we call allergens. Mm -hmm. For example, house dust mites, uh -huh. animal fur, saliva, mm -hmm. um, cockroaches, sometimes mold. So, other triggers include um, dust, tobacco smoke, obvious, yes. that is quite uh -huh. obvious, mm -hmm. uh, weather changes, mm -hmm. Sometimes some patients will have uh, what we call upper respiratory tract infection or colds. Oh, okay. uh, these are these are the triggers commonly um, causing trouble for asthma patients. But I have patients who can actually tolerate yes. some certain animals, mm -hmm. but I I have patients who can't even go near them. So mm -hmm. it's very individualized, very unique to mm -hmm. each asthma patient. Like for me, it used to be pollen. Uh, like and, and yes. pollen as well as uh, dust. Like, dust. I'm very, very sensitive to dust. Even till today, but not to the point of triggering an asthma attack per se. But when I was younger, I was put on the inhaler for about a year plus. But then after that, they said that my symptoms are mild enough that they could mm. remove it. Now, of course, today's topic, the main core of the, uh, you know, the focus today is inhalers because inhalers are essential to asthma patients, especially those with very severe triggers and also severe reactions to those. So let's talk about inhalers per se right what is an inhaler and there are actually many types so we'll start off with what is an inhaler first of okay. all okay before that i must address this point asthma is not curable mm -hmm. but with the right treatment mm -hmm. it can be very well controlled yes absolutely all right mm -hmm. so when we talk about inhaler mm -hmm. what is an inhaler an inhaler is a device used to deliver the medication to the lungs all right okay there are Many inhalers available. Mm -hmm. Commonly, we use what we call metered dose inhaler. Metered dose inhaler. Or in short, MDI. Mm -hmm. I have a example here. All right. Uh, where should I point it? Uh, the camera is right here. All right. So, this is an example of MDI. Mm -hmm. The L-shaped thing. When you press the canister, there will be a spray yeah, uh, a leaving puff. the mouthpiece. Yeah. A puff leaving the mouthpiece. Sounds something like... Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh -huh. Very popular. You will see a lot of uh, you will see it in movies. Mm -hmm. Many heroes or villains, even if you remember in James Bond, one of the villains was asthmatic. He was uh -huh. using the inhaler. Obviously, he was using it with wrong technique. Uh -huh. <laughs> Common in, in movies. Mm -hmm. So, we also have other type of inhaler, which we call the dry powder inhaler. Dry powder in inhaler. Sh in short, DPIs. Mm -hmm. They are powder-based inhalers. Mm -hmm. All right. Recently, in asthma treatment guidelines, um, they also included uh, this is what we call soft mist inhalers, or mm -hmm. we call it Respimat, as an add-on treatment uh, for asthma. But today, we shall focus on MDI. 
uh, and DPIs. All right. So, uh, is there a use case difference between them? Yeah. So, in asthma, generally there are two types of inhaled medication, mm-hmm. which are known as relievers. Mm-hmm. Or preventers, some call them controllers. Mm -hmm. Reliever inhalers are used to relieve asthma symptoms immediately. Let's say you have shortness of breath Uh or wheeze. You should take them. They are not for everyday use. They are only when necessary. Okay. Relievers also can be used during asthma attacks or Mm -hmm. flare-ups. During an attack, uh, you you may want to take your reliever inhaler Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or even uh, if, let's say, it's not helping and you want to go to the nearest clinic or hospital, Mm -hmm. you may use your reliever inhaler Mm -hmm. on on the the way. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of my patients also will use reliever inhaler before exercising. Just in case. Uh, just, uh, be, they will use it before exercising, uh, maybe 10 to 15 minutes before mm-hmm. or in between, uh, let's say, while they exercise and they feel a bit of shortness of breath and they also will stop and use the inhaler. Uh-huh. Sometimes we regularly advise the patient to use it before so to prevent uh, an, 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 mm-hmm. like, uh, like an episode of uh, worsening of asthma. Rather than them getting it first, they, they just are, use it yeah. as a you know stop-gap yeah. measure. So they, that that is uh, what we call reliever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Preventer or controller inhaler should be taken regularly according to the doctor's instruction Mm -hmm. to provide long-term asthma control Mm -hmm. and to prevent asthma attacks or flare-ups. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, steroid inhalers. Steroid inhalers, Uh, all right. So, for the reliever inhaler, the common one is salbutamol or definitely you would have uh, heard another popular name for it, the blue inhaler. Or the blue one. That that is that is the reliever inhaler. But... Mm -hmm. For steroid inhaler, it comes with multiple colors, Mm -hmm. um, you name it, orange, chocolate, Mm -hmm. uh, and all. Uh, This inhaler, they work by reducing inflammation and swelling in the airways, Mm -hmm. so patient can breathe better. In some patients, a combination of both both reliever and preventer inhalers may also be used. Now we have two in one. Wow. Uh, An inhaler contains preventer and also reliever. So it makes patients' life easy. So essentially, uh, they just choose which one they want to use. It's a single inhaler. So you use it as a preventer. That means you take it every day. Mm -hmm. But when you have symptoms, you also use the same inhaler. You do not require another uh, separate inhaler. Two Two in one function. Two different drugs doing in one inhaler. Wow. That is definitely new technology, isn't it? And comparatively to before, of course. Now, uh, as you said, there is the MDIs and also you have have the the dust uh, uh, the dry powder the dry powder inhaler which is the DPIs uh, and they are used for different scenarios as well you've got your preventers and your relievers now what are some of the benefits of using an inhaler compared to oral medication okay so when we use inhaler Mm -hmm. the medication directly enters the lung Mm -hmm. directly enters the Mm -hmm. lung so it provides a faster onset of action. Mm-hmm. So it acts fast. Mm-hmm. Not only that, it also has a low risk of Over the side effects. Okay. If you take an oral medication, the medication will go to the stomach first. Mm-hmm. Then from the stomach, it will get absorbed to the bloodstream mm-hmm. and then only it reaches the lung. Ah. So this is a direct way of, of, mm-hmm. of, of delivering the drug. Mm-hmm. So that's why I told inhalers... They are drug um, or medication delivery tool. Mm-hmm. So they are delivering the medication to the target area, mm-hmm. uh, of course, uh, which are the lungs. Sometimes, depending on the patient, the doctor might give oral medication such as Montelukast mm-hmm. for long-term uh, care. Mm-hmm. During an asthma attack or flare-ups, patient will receive steroid tablets. But um, this is just for a few days only. All right. Mm. All right. So the steroid, uh, I would like you to correct me if I'm wrong. They are antihistamines. They are anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So, doctor, what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a short break because uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of our listeners, if you guys got questions, uh, and if you're asthmatic and you have questions for our doctor, you can definitely put them up on our Facebook page. We do have people monitoring it right now. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, you know if it is uh, you know valid enough the questions I think our doctor will be able to answer that as well yeah and uh, we are talking about inhalers do you know how to use it correctly we're talking to Dr. J. Manis Rao and we're going to be back after this song this is Maroon 5 
Alright, Maroon 5, Harder to Breathe, right here on Tracks of M. And we are talking about something about breathing as well today because we are talking about inhalers. Do we know how to use it correctly? Our guest today is Dr. J. Maniswarao. He's a pharmacist with Hospital Pulau Pinang and he's been very kind to talk about asthma as well as inhalers. And of course, we are moving on to the next question, Doctor. Now, the importance, because as you mentioned earlier, you've uh, we've seen it on TV so much, people using it incorrectly, the inhaler. What is the importance of actually getting down the correct inhaler techniques proper inhaler technique plays an important role in ensuring the patient receives the optimal amount of medication Mm -hmm. which in turn gives the um, desired result good asthma control Mm -hmm. we have enough evidence published in the literature that poor inhaler technique leads to poor asthma symptom control Mm -hmm. not only that it also can increase the risk of you getting an uh, asthma flare up wow or attack Mm -hmm. and may contribute to more side effects okay but it is common for patients to use their inhalers wrongly it's common it's common and miss out the full benefit of their medication Um, imagine this you can give someone a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Let's say you you give someone that you like a Ferrari, a car. I wish I could afford a Ferrari, but okay. <laughs> Never mind, just imagine, you know. And a lot. All right. But that particular person mm-hmm. can't drive the, a car. Yeah. So it's a waste. It is a waste, yes. So we can give a very good inhaler to our patient, mm-hmm. but if that patient can't use it correctly, it's a waste. Absolutely. Not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So that's... Why I always say inhaler technique is an important skill skill mm-hmm. that we need to master. It may take several tries to feel comfortable with your inhaler, mm-hmm. but it does get easier with practice. Okay. Okay. Even if you are using an inhaler for a long time, mm-hmm. it's easy for little mistakes to slip in. Mm-hmm. Understand? So do not take this for granted. So, if let's say you ask about what is the correct inhaler, inhaler technique that we should teach mm-hmm. our patients, okay? So, this is, a, this is very important. I will discuss the correct steps for meter dose inhaler mm-hmm. and also the, dust, uh, 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 the dust. dry powder inhalers. I keep saying dust, I'm sorry. <laughs> dry powder. Well, yes. Since it's it, a trigger. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand that. Yeah. But I, so we call them uh, dry powder inhalers in short DPIs. DPIs. Okay. All right. I'm going to stick with DPIs. DPIs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First of all, MDIs. Okay. Meter dose inhaler. Mm-hmm. The medication is mixed with propellant in the pressurized system in the canister, right? Mm-hmm. So when you press the canister, can I press it here? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. You see a high velocity spray is coming out. Okay. All right. Okay. What will happen if a patient inhales fast from this meter dose inhaler? The the spray is coming out very, very fast uh-huh. and your patient is inhaling fast, which you always observe Anyone that using MDI, they will inhale. Fast. Yes, I, I've always thought that was the proper technique. So that is absolutely wrong. Wow. Okay, guys. The, if you inhale fast mm-hmm. with an MDI, me, a lot of the medication will going to hit at the back of the throat. Oh, it doesn't get where it needs it, to go. It's not going to the lungs. Mm-hmm. So more will hit at the back of the throat. Very little will go to the lungs. Okay. Which is not good. We want more going to the lung and less hitting at the back of the throat. Mm -hmm. So the important point here, patients need to inhale slowly, Mm -hmm. deeply using an MDI. Ooh, okay. If they inhale fast, I already told you the consequences. Uh All right. Okay, let's look at the steps. Mm -hmm. The first step, patients should sit or stand upright. Okay. Studies have shown this is the best position mm-hmm. for the medication to penetrate to the lungs. Okay. Okay, we can remove the cap All right. from the mouthpiece. Uh, and guys, if you want to see exactly how we are doing it, you can go on to our Facebook Live. It is currently live right now. The good doctor will be showing us exactly how to use it. So please do continue, doctor. Okay. Remove the cap from the mouthpiece. Mm-hmm. All right. A good practice is actually check inside the mouthpiece. Mm-hmm. Make sure that there are no foreign objects. Mm-hmm. It's Sometimes, I, let's mm-hmm. say we store the 
inhaler without closing the cap small piece of button or candy may get stuck inside which you sometimes you may not realize and i may accidentally inhale with it so it's a good practice to actually check the mouthpiece to make sure that it's clear from foreign objects because any debris hitting the back of your throat you don't want to inhale those yeah. it will be disaster you know yeah, absolutely <laughs> so it's a good practice to 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 Always do check. to check it mm-hmm. and hold your inhaler upright between the thumb and forefinger mm-hmm. like this and shake it well okay okay most of the mdis are in suspension form suspension. so you need to shake them well before use mm-hmm. about 5 second will do just like cough syrup like that yeah see mm-hmm. however some mdis in solution form Ooh. so shaking is not required or necessary mm-hmm. because there's no, no there's it's not a suspension so it's yeah. solution so it's mix or premix well yeah premix well yeah so you can check with your pharmacist which type you are using mm-hmm. but if you are unsure just, just shake it. Yeah. just shake it for be simplicity like <laughs> <laughs> for simplicity be like I'm not going to say her name <laughs> <laughs> but you can just shake it okay for simplicity right all right okay The next step, breathe out slowly, fully through your mouth. Mm-hmm. Don't have to do aggressively uh-huh. because the more air you release, uh, release mm-hmm. the more air you can take mm-hmm. and the more medication you can take. All right. But make sure you don't breathe into the mouthpiece of the MDI, you just away from the MDI. Okay. okay? Then you place the inhaler's uh, mouthpiece in in your mouth. Mm-hmm. In between teeth. close the lips tightly around the inhaler mouthpiece mm-hmm. make sure the teeth and the tongue do not block the inhaler mouthpiece ah uh, this one i tell you many tend to forget because if you block the mouthpiece with your tongue mm-hmm. then obviously the medication not going to reach your lung everything going to land on the tongue or on the the, tongue yeah yeah so keep your tongue low mm-hmm. under the mouthpiece okay, okay? and after that tilt your chin slightly up mm-hmm. you need to tilt your chin up so it there is like a clear um, yeah it clear uh, the path mm-hmm. not only that when you tilt your chin up right mm-hmm. the natural position of the tongue is to get lower ah uh, okay okay and we also uh, have have read many uh, um, publication that less will hit at the back of the throat if mm-hmm. you tilt your, chin, your okay. chin up all right okay now is the important part you start inhale slowly mm-hmm. with your mouth as soon as you have started inhalation mm-hmm. as soon as your you once you have started your inhalation or immediately after you have started your inhalation mm-hmm. or some of my colleagues say at the beginning of the inhalation mm-hmm. you press the canister mm-hmm. and don't stop there press and continue to inhale slowly and deeply until your lung feel full of air Oh, all right, all right. So you can see we need a bit of coordination here. Mm-hmm. So you start inhaling, mm-hmm. start your inhalation through your mouth, through your mouth. Okay. Press the canister, okay. but don't wait too long. Just as soon as you have started uh, your inhalation, immediately you press. Mm-hmm. Continue to inhale slowly and deeply. Traditionally, um, people were taught to do this simultaneously at the split second, at the same time. Mm-hmm. Well. It's quite difficult to do this at the same time, especially children. Especially children, but children, we have uh, like a spacer device we can oh. give uh, so uh, as an assistive device. Mm-hmm. But for adults, it's going to be uh, difficult. You can try to rub your tummy and hair at the same time at the, at the same direction. It's, I it's tried not, that. It doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> so simultaneous coordination probably is difficult, mm-hmm. especially when slow inhalation is involved. Mm-hmm. So what we are advocating now, you start your inhalation, you start your slow inhalation, mm-hmm. and as soon you have started it, press the canister and inhale slowly and deeply. Okay. Okay. Then remove the MDI from your mouth. and hold breath for 5 to 10 seconds or as long as you are comfortable after that breathe out slowly away from the inhaler mm-hmm. wait about 30 to 60 seconds before repeating the second dose if you are required uh, to take a second dose okay then you can close the cap don't forget always close the cap always close the cap and if you have, and if you have use an inhaler that contains steroid rinse your mouth with water or gargle but make sure you spit it out don't drink 
the that water. water. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't need no steroids in you. More than yeah. needed. So the next one is the the dry powder inhalers. Okay. Example: Turbo Healer, Aquila, Easy Healer. Mm-hmm. Uh, they deliver fine powder to the lungs when you breathe in. So unlike MDIs. With dry powder inhalers, you don't need to coordinate like how we mm-hmm. did for MDIs. Yeah. Right? However, however, you must remember, you must inhale forcefully from a dry powder inhaler, opposite of the MDI. So it's a very fast but deep breath. Far forceful than deep. Oh. No matter which inhaler you use, a deep inhalation is a must. Whether you use slow and deep or forceful and deep. Understand? Okay. The reason is because there is a propellant here pushing out the medication, right? Mm-hmm. For dry powder inhaler, there are no propellants. Mm-hmm. So you need to do the job. You need to inhale forceful enough to pull the medication out of the device, mm-hmm. and then only it will penetrate to the absolutely to the to the lungs. The, the lungs. Um, the steps are all the same. Except for each dry powder inhaler, it has its own way to load the dose. Mm-hmm. Uh, some need to twist, some need to push the uh, lever, mm-hmm. uh, some need to pull. You name it. It uh, all depends on the manufacturer. It depends on the individual dry powder inhaler. Mm-hmm. Patients need to do this correctly to ensure the dose is being loaded accurately. And once you have loaded the dose in a dry powder inhaler, mm-hmm. don't tilt it or shake it. The powder may dislodge, oh. uh, so you have to just keep it on the correct orientation. Mm-hmm. Then other steps are almost uh, all the same. I mm-hmm. like breathe out, uh, uh, watch in. your tongue and uh, position mm-hmm. and tilt your chin. But however, the big difference here: you need to inhale forcefully and deeply. For MDI, you need to inhale slowly and deeply. For mm-hmm. dry powder inhalers, you need to inhale forcefully and deeply. And these are things that the pharmacist will explain. Yeah, we will explain, and and that's what uh, that is one of our job mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, in my practice, uh, this is uh, routine. Absolutely. Uh, but we uh, and other important points that patient need to know are how to know your inhaler is empty mm-hmm. and need to be replaced. Okay. Okay. Some inhalers comes with dose counter, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. You can check the dose counter, mm-hmm. but this one it doesn't contain a uh, dose counter. No dose counter. Yeah. So patient tend to like you know they tend to test. Oh, I still got the medication. Okay. Sometimes it's not the medication; it may be the propellant. Just the propellant. Uh, yes. So we have no choice to keep track of the doses if there's no dose counter. That means this inhaler contains 120 doses. Mm-hmm. If you're supposed to take two puff in the morning, two puff in the evening, mm-hmm. then four puffs per day. So a month is 120. So you know by a month this should finish. Yeah. So yeah. that's how you keep track. If um, the inhaler doesn't uh, contain a dose counter, yeah, you can just put a sticker on it or something. We ask on the box. We ask to t- uh, write the uh, opening date uh-huh, and the clo- and uh, and we know when exactly exactly it will finish. So because you 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 there is a way of tracking, right? So mm-hmm. And and all of these inhalers also have got an expiry date, right? Yeah. So that's what I want to uh, explain later. You need to know. How to check the expiry dates? Mm-hmm. Uh, then you also need to know how to clean your inhalers, mm-hmm. since there are variations from product to product. Patients should consult their healthcare professional to get complete and accurate information on this aspect. All right, okay, doctor. What we're going to do is uh, we've spoken for quite a bit now. We are going to take a short break. And once we come back, there is just a couple more things that we're going to touch before we end the show. And uh, today we are talking to Doctor Jayamani Swarao, who is a pharmacist with Hospital Pulau Pinang, and we are talking about inhalers. Do you actually know how to use it correctly? Right here on Tracks of M. Don't go anywhere. This is Jordan Sparks with No Air. Be inspired, informed, and up to date. Tune in to Tracks Momentum interview feature of the day at 11:15 a.m. Join us as we speak to our panel of guests on various topics. Health on Tracks on Monday, Tuesday Spectrum, Wednesday What Matters. Face to face with our guests on Thursdays and on Friday. Tune in to W Talk. Trax Momentum, Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Only on Trax FM. 
No, and Jordan Sparks, Chris Brown, right here on Tracks. We are talking about inhalers. Do you know how to use it correctly? With our guest today, Dr. J. Manis Barao. And of course, we are currently talking about inhalers. He just mentioned about the correct methods as well. Now, doctor, what are some of the technical errors of inhalers that commonly occur among patients? There are several errors commonly seen. For example, uh, did not breathe out to empty the lungs before inhaling from an inhaler. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, the more air you exhale, the more air you can inhale Mm -hmm. together with the medication. Mm -hmm. Another common error, inhaling slowly with a dry powder inhaler. Yes. You need to inhale uh, forcefully Mm -hmm. when you are using a dry powder inhaler. Mm -hmm. Another error, fast inhalation with an MDI. Yes. Emitted dose inhaler. By right, you should inhale slowly and deeply. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you need to know which one you're using so that you know which way you need to breathe. So you can imagine if the patient, uh, is a particular patient is given one dry powder inhaler, one uh, meter dose inhaler. Ooh. So you can see the confusion there. That's why we need to really educate our patient well. Mm-hmm. With MDI or meter dose inhaler, there is another error related to the coordination problem. You may observe some patients tend to press the MDI first. They press the canister first, then only they start to inhale. As Mm -hmm. I mentioned just now, you should start your inhalation first. Mm -hmm. As soon as you have started it, you should press or immediately after you have started your inhalation, you should press it. Mm -hmm. Imagine patient doing this, pressing the canister first and then only they start to inhale. Mm -hmm. You can easily miss this. This error has been shown as a critical error. Ah. Can lead to poor asthma control. So you should never ever do this. And, and you, you continue having flare-ups and all that and then you think yeah. your medicine doesn't work. But actually the technique is wrong. The technique is wrong. So it's breathe in, press, continue breathing in. Yes. Start inhaling, press, continue to inhale slowly and deeply. The key is slow and deep inhalations. For MDIs and fast and quick, uh, fast and deep for DPIs. Yes. All right. Okay, doctor, if the patient's inhaler use technique is still weak, are there any other ways to help the patient? Well, we need to see at which step the patient are having problems with their inhaler. Mm -hmm. Then we provide the solutions. For example, patients using MDI, if they have a problem with coordination, Right, meaning a problem with the fire uh, timing of the inhalation and pressing uh, of the MDI, we can ask them to use a spacer mm-hmm. or valve holding chambers. Oh, and these you, are new technologies. You may have seen a clear plastic cylinder device. Yes, you can attach the MDI at the back, and patient can inhale from from. It's an assistive device. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very useful, particularly among children and elderly. Mm-hmm. Spaces or valve holding chambers are also useful during an asthma attack or flare up, mm-hmm. where many patients they find it difficult to coordinate during these episodes. Absolutely. Obviously, you are breathless, you are panting, you it, can't be coordinating. Yeah, you know? So you need the time. spacer or valve holding chamber to actually help you during that critical time. Mm-hmm. Some spaces or chambers are made from anti-static material. Ah. So they have the advantages to minimize the static charge buildups mm-hmm. and improve medication delivery. Absolutely. Uh, spaces or valve holding chambers need to be cleaned mm-hmm. and well maintained. That one we have to remember. Uh, you can talk to your pharmacist about how to select the best spacer that for is you. suitable for you. Mm-hmm. Another example is, let's say uh, we are have, we are having a patient using dry powder inhaler. But patient can't inhale forcefully. Mm-hmm. Even after multiple times, we ask the patient to do so. Mm-hmm. Here, we have no choice. We have to think about alternative device uh, already. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it is also important. This is why it's important for us healthcare professionals to review inhaler use and the technique regularly. You know, mm-hmm. um, What we are advocating in our hospital setting is to choose the right inhaler for the right patient. Yes. This means we select the most appropriate inhaler device suitable for our patient. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we call this personalizing or individualizing inhaler devices. Mm -hmm. As we understand that not every patient can use every single device. Some 
can use DPIs, some can't. Mm-hmm. Some can use MDIs and some can't. Mm-hmm. So in our hospital and clinic, we look at each patient's characteristics mm-hmm. and choose the best device for that particular patient. This is what we are doing in Penang Hospital nowadays. Absolutely. Now, the, of course, I mean like every patient is, as you said, unique and yeah. everybody got different triggers. Everybody needs, have their different needs. And of course, with inhalers, asthma patients have a chance at leading a very healthy lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, doctor, before we end, we are at the final question. What are some of your advice and take-home messages for asthma patients and patients who are currently on inhalers? You can control your asthma. Absolutely. Adhere to doctor's appointment to monitor the condition of asthma. Regular medical checkups are important to ensure better asthma control. Mm-hmm. Okay. Seek advice from the doctor to get more information on the type of inhaler required and how to avoid asthma triggers. Mm-hmm. Obtain advice uh, and counselling from the pharmacist regarding the proper method or technique using the inhaler. Mm -hmm. Adhere to treatment regimen. That is very important as well. Absolutely. And seek treatment if asthma condition is still not under control after using the inhaler. Mm -hmm. Learn about written asthma action plan and how to use it. Ensure proper inhaler care um, the inhaler maintenance clean it um, as as, you. as as uh, follow the manufacturer's recommendation mm-hmm. or you can consult pharmacists on how to clean your inhaler devices mm-hmm. this also applicable for spaces and wall holding chambers mm-hmm. need to be cleaned regularly don't put it in hot water and boil it eh? no, it's, uh, <laughs> better not <laughs> better not la. do not easily be deceived by uh, dubious advertisement for asthma products on social media that are not approved by medicine advertisement board this is something that needs to be said each time it's a big problem outside there inhalers are the way to go guys there's nothing else out there right now and if it <laughs> did the government would be the first to handle it right they would be already using it if it's as effective as they say it is so don't believe all this nonsense uh-huh. on social media so practice healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. do not smoke or quit now if you have the habit mm-hmm. uh, patient and members of public can contact the national pharmacy call center mm-hmm. npcc at 1-800-886722 i repeat that 1-800-886722 Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. except on public holidays. Mm -hmm. Finally, always remember that the most expensive inhaler Mm -hmm. is the one that is not used correctly by the patient. Yes, absolutely. You could spend thousands on inhalers, but if you're not using it well, it's still detrimental to you. Spot on. All right, doctor. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you in here today. And uh, you've been wonderful teaching everyone currently listening about inhalers and do you know how to use it correctly. And with that, it's about time that we shut uh, Health on Tracks for today. And with that, it's a big thank you to you. Thank you for coming all the way from Penang. Welcome. And thank you for the invitation. All right, doctor. We'll see you soon. Of course, I think we'll be talking more about... uh, other kinds of uh, asthma issues in the future. Thanks so much to Dr. Jay Rao, who's Rao, uh, who is a pharmacist with the Hospital of Pula Pinang. And uh, we are talking about inhalers. Do you know how to use it correctly? So if you're not use it correctly, guys, there's a lot of ways of doing it. And doctor, this is a song that you requested earlier. It's My Life by Bon Jovi.